In this video, I'm going to show you how to scan an old photo. So um, first off, the instructions in my lecture are from for if we were scanning at the school using the scanners, but I'm going to show you scanning how I scan at home. So first off, you need to make sure that you're handling photos only by touching the sides and back, or you can wear white cotton gloves. It's really important to not touch the surface of your photos with your bare hands because the oils from your skin will um, end up eating away at the photos and they will leave fingerprints and eventually damage your photos. You might not see the fingerprints right away, but over time, those fingerprints will show up. So uh, first off, you need to go to the scanner and open up the lid. Check to see that the, that the glass on the scanner is clean. If it's not, gently wipe away any dust or dirt that might be on top. Be careful not to press down too hard initially because if there is like a little piece of sand and you press down hard on it, it can scratch the glass on the scanner. Place your photo face down in the upper right hand corner of the glass and close the lid. So I am working with an Epson Perfection V5500. Epson printers all come with pretty much the same software. So we're going to go through and pick this, these uh, same settings on here. Okay, so if you don't see all of these extra options, It's probably because you are on another mode, such as home mode. If you don't see the extra options, make sure you're on professional mode. All right, so you want to make sure that you have a reflective uh, document type. The other option is film. Some scanners can do film, some can't, but we're doing a reflective document. We also want to make sure that our exposure type is for photo. We're using 24-bit color and not grayscale or black and white. Even if you're scanning a black and white photo, keep it on 24-bit color. We want to have our resolution be 300 dpi. Press preview at this point. So I'm going to click preview. And a preview scan is happening now. It's scanning what's on the glass at this moment. So now that we have our preview, we want to select the area that we actually want scanned. So you can see that there's this dotted line that's selected from the last time I scanned. I'm going to click and drag. And if that line is still there, you can click on the line and then hit delete. And now this is the only thing that's selected here. Now for our target size, this is going to kind of depend on what you are scanning it for. But let's say I wanted to end up printing an 8x10. Okay, so for the target size, for the width, I'm going to go ahead and put in 10. Now when I click off to the side here, you'll see it automatically changes to 7.07 .07 inches for the right side. Now if I wanted to do this 8 by 10, I need to actually have it a little bit bigger. So let's try putting in 8 for the height instead. And when I click off to the side here, it goes to 11 by 31. So that means this is going to be 8 inches, this is going to be 11.31 inches. So if I want to um, print it as an 8x10, I will end up having to crop some of the side off. Okay, so now that I have that set up, I'm going to, I don't want any of the adjustments, the auto adjustments to be applied, so I'm going to click Reset. Now we don't have any auto adjustments applied, and I'm going to go ahead and click Scan. Now here I could tell it where to save. You could save it to the desktop, or you can choose any folder you would like to go to. And then you can also change the name of the file here. So I'm going to call it Jesse's first birthday. That's my little brother. And it's good to have a descriptive name because if you start doing a whole lot of scanning, um, it could get really confusing if you just call it old photo or scan or something. You want to have descriptive names in there. I'm going to leave this file format as a TIFF. TIFF has no file comp compression, so I'll get all the information 
possible by using TIFF. Okay, so now that I hit OK, it's going to scan. And the larger, your, the larger you want the scan to end up being, the longer it might take. If you scan a really small photo, trying to make it like a 16 by 20, it might take several minutes. Okay, so it is finished scanning, and if I go to my desktop, I now have it right there. Redondo, Jesse's first birthday as a TIFF. And all right, and that's how you scan an old photo.